Hello, good sir. Thanks, Prince. Sure. Thank you. 
Hello, good sir. What exactly do you first? I Tell me about. Them. I've already. T Tell me more, sir. Enough about. Them. All right. Tell me more about this girl. Enough. All right. Thanks, Prince. Sure. Thank you! Oh, thank you! How did you manage to get it? Never mind. I know that you're a wizard, but you've done something that my people have tried to do for generations. First you save my life, then you regain the golden staff. If there is anything I can do for you, just tell me. Now that I have the golden staff, she'll have to take me seriously as a fellow monarch. But even if I gain her respect with the staff, she still probably won't like me very much unless I can give her something nice, something as pretty as she is. Then, once she's feeling kindly towards me, I need something to keep me from stumbling all over my words. I can never figure out anything to say. Thank you, sir. I have the golden staff, so she'll have to take me seriously as a fellow monarch. These flowers are perfect to make her look kindly upon me, but I still need the right words to say. Otherwise, I'll start stammering and looking foolish. I'll never get anywhere like that. It worked! All of it! She has agreed to consider my courtship, and I owe it all to you, my friend, more than I can ever repay. But I will try. I know that you have a quest here, but I know not what it is. I will accompany and help you as I can, and perhaps I can give you some fraction of the happiness you have given me. Greetings. My prince explained that you are a friend of his and that you helped bring us together. For that, I am indebted to you. My role in your romance was nothing, dear princess. On the contrary, it means everything to me. I am not blind to what the consequences of our union could mean to our races as well. It could unite our peoples. This could usher in a new age of peace. You are largely responsible for that. The prince is a sweet guy, isn't he? He's very sweet. A little naive, but all the more adorable because of it. I never really thought of elves that way. But he changed my mind. What do you think your father is going to say about your union? I don't think he's ever considered the idea. But he has a lot of respect for the elves. After a little grumbling, I think he'll be happy for me. That's a nice flute you've got there. Thank you. It was given to me by my warder. He's the one who trained me to hunt and track, but he also taught me to play this flute. He is one of the only people I know who still remembers how to play the old written music. There isn't much of it left, but he collected some of the ancient sheets and kept them safe. I was honored to learn the skill from him. Tell me a little about your people. I thought you were human, but I guess you're not. Otherwise, my people would be your people. 
We're nomadic. We live all over Prion following the game we hunt. It might appear to the other aces that we're rather loosely organized, but that's not true. My father leads us wisely with the counsel of the people. We have thrived for generations. Our lives are hard though and sometimes dangerous. The appeal of the elves' safe and stable society affects many of us. For some, it's too much to resist. They come to the elves as refugees and beg for whatever work is available. I think my people want to settle down. They follow my father out of loyalty, but they're ready to change the way they live. Even I wouldn't mind some stability. Are you ill? It sounds like you've got a cough. I do have a slight cough, but it's nothing. I caught a chill and a downpour a little while ago. I'll get over it eventually. Just now, it's not that bad. Would you mind doing me a favor? A favor? Certainly. What is it? I was wondering if you'd accompany me somewhere. I need you to use your golden sword for a task. Of course I'll help you. I can't imagine what task would require my golden sword. It's not much of a weapon, it's a symbol of leadership. But I'll be happy to accompany you. This is incredible! It's music from the ancients! What an amazing find! Would you like me to play it? No, wait a while. I'll tell you when. All right. Thanks, Princess. That's all I have to say. Sure. Here. There are giants everywhere! They're hiding in the trees just waiting for someone to walk into their forest so they can grab them, throw them against a very uncomfortable tree, and tie them up with vines! Leave before it's too late!
Greetings. Would you mind doing a favor? Could you start playing the tune from that book I gave you? Very well. Just tell me when to stop. Why did you rescue me? What do you mean? I mean, why would a party of two humans and an elf risk their lives to save a dwarf? It doesn't make any sense. Why wouldn't we? It just doesn't happen. We haven't even seen an elf for generations. And the humans we have seen have been content to keep as far from us as possible. It suits us fine. Humans and elves can keep their petty wars to themselves as far as we're concerned. Because you were in trouble. Everyone should help out those in need. Wow, you really helped me just because I needed help? That's so nice. I don't believe it. It's a custom among my people to give a favor in return for one especially one as significant as saving a life. All you have to do is ask. That's fine, but could I talk with you a while before I ask for anything? Of course. What do you want to talk about? Can you tell me anything about that building to the south? Sure. It's the great shining city. No one ever enters and no one ever leaves. The front doors are closed and nothing can open them. We've even tried tunneling in. We just bounced off the floor. It's made of something we've never encountered before. How did you get captured? I wandered into the forest of giants when I shouldn't have. I just wanted to see them. Everyone told me that they were actually bigger than humans. I didn't believe it until they jumped out of the trees and grabbed me. The giants don't bother anyone unless you go into their forest. They're pretty touchy about that. I'm just lucky they tied me up instead of stepping on me. Do they normally squash intruders? That's what the elders say, and no one's ever said differently. I thought maybe they were exaggerating just to keep us out of the forest, but maybe not. At least they only tied me up. Tell me what you know about these giants. Many generations ago, my ancestors dug their tunnels here. When they emerged from the ground to have a look around, they encountered the giants. They weren't friendly and definitely not especially happy to meet us. Mayhem broke out. The dwarves weren't used to war, but they were quick studies. They forged weapons and battled the giants for years. One day, the giants suddenly stopped fighting. They drew back into the forest and remained there. As long as we stayed out, they left us alone. We keep the store of weapons in a vault, though, ready just in case the giants change their minds and attack. We also have an interesting legend about the giants. Tell me the legend of these giants. According to legend, the giants are the children of the Shining City. They lived inside it and were very happy, but they always wondered what lay outside of the city's walls. One day, they snuck out. The city discovered them missing. It was furious that its children had left it, so as punishment it took away their eyes and closed its doors, leaving them outside. The shining city became dark in its sorrow. The giants moved into the forest nearby. They hoped that one day the city would reopen its doors and let them in. The only memory of their time inside was a gem that one of them had brought with them. They cherished that memory and guarded it jealously. One day the city's heart grew lonely, it decided to forgive its errant children and invite them to return, so it began to shine again. If the giants had seen it, they would have rushed home. But the city had taken their eyes and they couldn't see the beckoning light. 
So they remain inside the forest, waiting for a call that came long ago, and the city waits for its children who will never return. We dwarves believe that if only we could lead the giants back to the city, they would go in and leave the forest to us. We know that they are guarding the gem at the center of the forest. A few brave dwarves have entered the forest in hopes of stealing the gem and bringing it to the shining city. The giants would follow the gem, and when they came upon the city, it would open its doors to them and they would go back home. What do you know about the gem? Supposedly, it's huge and crystal and has strange writings on it. Actually, it's not supposed to be all that valuable. Crystal's not worth much. You'd figure that something they guarded so fiercely would be worth more. Has anyone ever been able to take the gem? A long time ago, a dwarf named Lunkput the Swift ventured into the forest. Somehow he made it to the center, into a clearing. And there, lying on the ground, he discovered the gem. He grabbed it and bolted for the city. Well, the giants followed him all right, but they caught him before he got anywhere near the city. He tried hiding behind trees and rocks anywhere out of sight, but the giants honed in on him as if he were a beacon. They took back their gem and squished poor Lunkput. Since then, no one's ever come back out of the forest once they went in. How far did you make it inside? Did you actually see the gem? No, I never got anywhere near it. I didn't even mean to go as far as I did. One step inside the forest was enough for these big bullies. They grabbed me and tied me up. Didn't even say a word. Are you sure you didn't get stepped on? You're pretty short. One of these days, gravity is going to realize that people shouldn't have legs that long. Then you'll be sorry. Enough about these giants. All right, what else do you want to know? Do you know anything about a golden hammer? A golden hammer? Hmm, I'm not sure. Wait, I think there's a golden hammer in the weapons vault. A few years ago, there was a false alarm. We thought that the Titans were attacking, so the elders ordered that the vault be opened. Everyone took up weapons and headed towards the forest. At that point, we realized we had been tricked. Some child got his rear tanned, and everyone went to replace their weapons. I was one of the first in the vault, and I noticed a golden hammer shoved way in the back. No one had taken it. I looked at it to find out why. The weight was all wrong, and I determined that it was actually forged of gold. Can you believe it? A soft metal like gold? One strong blow, and the thing would flatten. I don't understand why anyone ever made such a useless weapon. Maybe the hammer wasn't meant to be used as a weapon. Why would someone forge a hammer unless it was meant to be used? That doesn't make any sense. Do you think you could get it for me? That could be my favor. I don't think so. The only time the vault is open is in response to an attack by the giants. They never make exceptions. In fact, ever since the false alarm, they are more careful than ever to verify that the attack is genuine. They don't want dwarves harming themselves or others, either by accident or deliberately, by using these weapons. Some of them are very dangerous. Is there any other way into the vault? Absolutely not. Dwarves are masters at tunneling. We made the vault impossible to tunnel into by lining it with fire-hardened metals. There's no way in unless it is opened. Could you go ask the elders if they'd make an exception? No one seems to want the hammer anyway. I could ask, but I already know the answer. Nothing is going to open that vault except an attack from the giants. And I really hope that doesn't happen in my lifetime. I'll go, though. Wait here. I'll be back soon.
know about anything else. Perhaps we should talk a bit more. Fine with me. Where do you live? Why, right here. Well, under here, anyhow. We dwarves prefer to live underground. We have a network of tunnels that run for miles in all directions. Let me introduce you to my companions. What the heck is Dead Man's Friend? It's a fungus, a toadstool that tends to grow under carrion. Dead bodies. That's why it's known as Dead Man's Friend. Can you tell me about the Zuzu Nut? The nut is named after the Zuzu, a shy animal that survives on a diet of just the meat of the nut. It's considered a delicacy, and it's very hard to come by. The nut's shell is incredibly thick. It's almost impossible to open. The Zuzu has to be very strong just to crack them. I think you'll find a grove of the nuts off to the west. Good luck in getting at the meat. Where am I going to find a plith plant? They're not rare. You should be able to find them anywhere. The plith have pink flowers. If you see those, just pull up the whole plant. You should get the roots along with everything else. Can I have those herbs? Sure. I've got them here somewhere. What are you supposed to do with all of these things? Just feed them to her. It all ends up in the same place. After she's eaten them all, she should have shaken off that nasty cough. You think that this favor would make us even? You think a simple cough remedy is worth my life? I owe you far more than that. You keep thinking about what you need. This is just being friendly. Can we talk about some other things? Sure. Could we go back to the subject of the golden hammer again? What do you need to know about? Let's talk about some... Sure. Could we go back... What do you need to... This is getting... Nothing's going to change. But if it will make you happy, I'll go back in and rack my brains. I'll try everything, and I won't come back out until I've got it. Don't get your hopes up. Very well. If you do somehow get the hammer, meet me at the Shining City. I need you to do something with it there. Yes, my friend? What can I do for you? Do you know anything about the dwarves? Before we met our new friend, I'd never actually seen a dwarf. But my father has. As king, he's spoken with their representatives on a few occasions. They tend to keep to themselves most of the time. They stay carefully neutral in any conflicts we have with the humans, and they're incredibly stubborn. No amount of persuasion will make them take sides. 
all in all, we usually leave them alone and they do the same. Do you know anything about the Citadel? I'm afraid I've only heard that it exists, but I don't know anything about it. I'm sorry. Could you climb the tree and get that crystal? All right, I'll be back in a moment. They're coming and they'll be here before you know it! The flute's no good anymore! When they find us with the relic, they'll tear us apart! The relic! That's what they're really after! We've got to get rid of it! I was standing there in the tunnels arguing with an elder about opening up the vault when the crystal gem dropped from above right on the elder's head. Before I could even laugh, I heard the pounding of the giants trying to get inside the tunnel. The elder went crazy. He sounded the alarm and opened the vault right then and there. I grabbed both the crystal gem and the golden hammer and took a back tunnel here. I guessed that I could get rid of my obligation to you and lead the giants back to their home. Here's the hammer you wanted. I'm glad to have been able to repay you. Now all we have to do is wait for the giants to come home. They'll arrive, the doors will open, and everyone will be happy! I hope. There's room enough for all of the races here. If we could live together, we could do it better than ever. Thank <laughs> you. 
Pablo, my boy! I knew you could do it! They put their symbols into the face of a mysterious building without even knowing why. Quite an achievement if you ask me. That shows leadership qualities. You've inspired loyalty in these children. They trust you. Does your heart good to see them together, doesn't it? Too bad it's only for a little while, hmm? It's a good thing they don't know that you're just scouting for your lord. That soon he will destroy these children's lives for his dreams of conquest. That would just ruin their day. Better keep this between you and me if you know what I mean. Don't worry, Haplo. I won't interfere in your mission. In fact, I have a present for you. I tried to take up a collection around the office, but no one there seems to like you very much. I wasn't going to say anything, but they all think you're on the side of evil. <laughs> that doesn't make you very popular. Most of their ideas of a going away present took the form of a punch in the mouth. I stuck up for you, though. He's not a mindless puppet, I said. He has very good reasons for wanting to destroy everything. I'm sure he's thought this whole thing through. They seemed a little doubtful, but I know my old buddy Haplo. You'll come through in the end. Anyway, since no one chipped in, I got you this. It's a genuine, 100% natural, roughly spherical, all-purpose, evil combating device. Really? I know you're thinking, Zipnab, how can this obviously rare and well-crafted document holder also combat evil? Well, fear not. This particular paperweight is magic. That's right. As the stone approaches true evil, it will glow. Soon, you will encounter an evil greater than any you've ever known, even in the labyrinth. And it has magic. Horrible, powerful, destructive. Much different than the magic that we command. The rock will react to this magic. The closer you get, the brighter it will glow. When you are in its very presence, crush the rock. You'll know the right time. What will happen when I crush it? I don't know, but I'm sure that it will be impressive. And just in case it doesn't work, use the backup plan. Hurl that sucker! I find that a nice solid puck upside the head always slows evil down. Now you're thinking, how can he afford to give this away? Well, that's very astute of you, Haplo. I can't afford it. Of course, I'm taking a loss on this transaction, but when your friends start asking you, where'd you get that great evil combat up? You tell them you got it from old Zipnab, and soon they're telling their friends, and they're telling their friends. Eventually, everyone has a Zipnab special. Take pry and seal piece, Haplo. Go back to your lord. But remember what you've seen here. Remember these people. Consider carefully exactly what you are doing and why. Thank <laughs> you.